Okay, uh, welcome everybody. This is the, as you can probably tell, this is the first one that we've ever done. Um, so I'm kind of intrigued to see how it goes. Hopefully it's helpful. There will be a short survey at the end. Uh, if you could just, there's only two questions, I promise. Uh, but if you could just give, a, give us an indication if you're finding it helpful, because we have planned, um, you know, basically a webinar every Wednesday, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and it's only going to last about 20 minutes because I know time is precious for everybody, but we think it's a good way that we can transfer knowledge to you. So hopefully you find it helpful. Um, in terms of actually using it, uh, you're all muted at the moment, but if you raise your hand, um, particularly at the end, we'll then try to cover any questions and you can also type questions in. And at the end of it, we'll be able to see who's asked which question, and then I, I promise we'll come back to you. So type in the questions or raise your hands, um, and then we can we can unmute you. For those of you that can't hear anything, um, please read it on the screen. Um, you need to check that the audio is switched on for your computer. I can hear some people must have the um, is your mic off because I can hear big background noise. Okay, that's on the phone, okay. Right, no worries. So, um, what are we actually gonna cover? I just want to take you through the dashboard um, and take you through general settings, if that's okay. Because general settings is so important because um, it will either speed up your data entry, but also allow you to be able to um, analyze data that you want to. And if those settings aren't correct, then you're not gonna get anything out of it. So we're gonna cover that first, then I'm just gonna take you through the dashboard on how it should be sent up and some options when we come to the reporting side. So first, I'm gonna to go to the cows head, I'm gonna to go to daily tasks, and then daily events, uh, which you'll be putting information in the whole time. On the right-hand side, there's a little tab there, settings. So on the settings page here, um, you need to configure this so that it's right for your farm. So the first one's fairly obvious, your voluntary waiting period. So if you start serving after 45 days, um, don't leave it on 60, because obviously the analysis will be incorrect. So make sure you have the correct figure in there. Record comments for reproduction data. What that means is that if you put in a service, it will then give you a tab where you can put in a comment. If you record, for example, PDs, um, you could then put in if you had twins as a comment. So you have to tick this box if you want to do it. Our advice is do it because um, it's always interesting to be able to look back. Um, for example, the cow was served and she was dirty or whatever, or she was served too late. It's good to have a, a comment behind the event. So I would, I would always say tick that. Register Easter signs, what does that mean? This enables you to record the type of heat. Um, so if you haven't got an activity system and if you're not using a managed heat, such as a PRID or whatever it happens to be, or an OBSYNC program, um, you probably don't need to tick that. If you do tick it, it means that you'll have the ability to really analyze the data from the fertility side even deeper. So on the US, US KPI module, you'll be able to look not just as insemination rates, peg rates, and conception rates, you'll be able to look at the difference between a natural heat and a managed heat. And you also then have the option to break down the managed heats. So you can see which type of managed heat is most effective. Obviously, if you're not using that, then it's just another piece of data entry that you don't need to, to click to go past, so take it off. But if you are doing a managed heat or anything like that, we would recommend that you keep it on. Okay, the next tab to go to is service. Now, I see this sometimes, uh, you'll see that the, the default operator, which comes up automatically, in this case, it's a John McGee, um, this person left. So this person is no longer relevant, we don't need them. There's a new member of staff. So I'll just show you quickly, if you click on the plus key, Plus always creates new. And this one here, the little triangle, that allows you to edit, edit things. So if you have a new person that's joined and they are the default operator, hit the plus key, pop the name in. You need to put something in under herd number. You must put that in. So names there, herd number there. I know it's a bit strange, but you need to do it. They're an operator and you say, okay. So now what will happen is Matt will then be automatically the default operator that's gonna help you speed up data entry. Um, use semen stock. If you want to use that, tick it, phone the help desk, we'll show you how to enter your semen stock. And from that point on, it will then start deducting it. But if you don't tick that, then the program doesn't know that you actually want to control the, the semen stock. 
across the pregnancy. So here, really, really important, uh, number of days after service when we want the cow to appear on the list. So that has to be correct. So if you need to change it, just change the figure there, say OK, and that will then present that cow on the list for cows due to be PD'd with the correct number of days. Ask for days in calf when PD'd plus. That can be very handy if you're running, for example, a bull and the vet says the cow is 70 days in calf. The program then, if you put in 70 days, will calculate an estimated service date for you. Um, so again, that's, that's an option that, that can save you time. We go across to drying off. Okay, so the number of days to dry off, if you're planning, for example, to, to change that, um, cutting back production, whatever it happens to be, that's where you're gonna need to put the figure in there. Um, this section here, the, that's, that's really important, but we're gonna cover that at a, at a separate time, but I just want to make you aware that it is there. If the cow has no mastitis, no high somatic cell count, and we can actually uh, determine what is a high cell count, obviously within the program, then you can say, okay, just use a, a teat sealant. If she has one case of mastitis, then you use a different type of treatment. And if she has one high cell count, then that could be antibiotics, depending on what you want. So this has to be set correctly. And if it is, the program will then say, right, and this is the date that the cow should be dried off. And this is the treatment that we'd recommend. The purpose really of doing the webinars is just to kind of hopefully lead you in the right direction, but I think more importantly, to make you aware that that functionality is there. So I think at that point then, please call the help desk on anything like this. We will log in and we will help you set it up and show you, show you how to do it. Okay, finally, on carvings, record carving ease. I would definitely, definitely tick that. Um, in previous versions, that would only appear on the cow records. Uh, but there's new functionality on your report writer. Um, again, we'll be doing a webinar uh, next month on that. But you are able to pull out a report showing all the cows and the carving ease within report writer. So again, I think that's that's a good one that you should tick. Um, also, enter condition score at carving. So when the cows carve down, you then don't need to put a separate line in. It will give you the option to enter a condition score. Um, and again, I think that's becoming certain farm assurance schemes now more important. So uh, that will just speed up your data entry. So let's just go back quickly just to, to, to go over it again. Here we can set up our voluntary waiting period. We can record comments, register Easter signs. That's if you're using a managed heat and we want to do analysis based on it. Uh, make sure that your default service method is correct and the operator is correct because that's going to speed up your data entry. Number of days after service when we want the cow to be presented for PD. Drying off, make sure that the days are correct. And this section here, I recommend that you call the help desk and we'll, we'll set that up for you. I will show you one report on that just to kind of emphasize why I think it's important. And then finally, do we want to record carving ease and do we want to enter condition score at carving? So those are all general settings. Um, hopefully that will they will they will help you. So what we're going to do now then is we're going to go across, it's just going to save the settings on there, and we're going to go over to our dashboard. The reason we covered the dashboard on the first webinar um, is because sometimes we log on to your PCs and we see some fairly strange graphs with no data on, or we see uh, graphs with very strange values on, and the dashboard is something that you see the whole time. So that's what's in front of you. So this is it's really super important that this is set up correctly. So at the top, we have a, the colors obviously within the program. We can see how many cows have PD negative. So there's three cows. We can click on that cow, double click. That will take us to the cow record. But you'll also see there's some little cogs here which are important. So I just select this one here. Show barren and dry on the barren tile. If I tick this, what will happen then is you'll see the dashboard will reload. And if we have a cow that is barren, and she's been, she's been dried off, she will then appear on the dashboard sitting here. So whenever the dashboard is loading, it's, it's just recalculating the figures. So that can, be, that can be quite handy. Going across, we'll see there's another little tab there. You'll see the figures have changed. So if I just go into there, there we have 693, and you can see that, yeah, half barren. So that's the, that's the black section there and half dry. Okay, we have another little tab sitting here. 
This one is if you only want to see the young stock. So if you just want to report purely of the number of the young stock that have been inseminated or a PD negative or PD positive, if you put a tick in there and select OK, it will then completely recalculate it. Remember to take the tick out afterwards because the next person that then goes onto the system will look and think, you know, what is going on? I have no dry cows or you know, what's actually going on. So what we do on the help desk is if you want to use that report, just do it the once, show it and then take it off. That way, no confusion. Okay, what we then have going across here is we'll have all the cows basically um, that are due to PD, due to dry off, and due to calf, and we then have the task section. So what are the tasks for? The tasks, you can configure it, and that can be, for example, if you want to set up um, routing foot trims or, or whatever it happens to be. Um, you'll see there's a little cog here, just above the 47, and I'm just going to select that and then I can explain it hopefully slightly better. So wherever you hit the cog, that is a setting. And here, what I've got, I don't particularly like it. I have cows to dry off in the next week. That's okay. Cows to PD in the next week, that's not so bad. Cows to calve, well, I, I want to look ahead at least two weeks. Tasks, as I said, that could be Okay, uh, I've just been told I may be talking to myself, um, <laughs> which is unfortunate. Could anybody just reply uh, if you can still hear me or have we lost the, uh, the sound? Okay, sorry. Okay, we've got we've got two people that have a problem with the audio on their PCs. My apology. We will we will line these gremlins out. As I said, it's, it's, it's the first stab at it. So um, for those that are, have an intermittent sound, yeah, I apologize, we'll try and, try and work it out. Okay, but it's good that everybody else can. So this is important. You'll see here, I went to the cog and I'm selecting the action list settings for the dashboard. I can have different pre-lists. I can set up different ones. There's one here for the app. There could be one for Tony who does all the young stock or maybe the, the foot trimmer. So you can create different lists. They could be just a task. And on the task, we're only interested in foot trimming. I do not expect you to be able to go back and do this. I just want you to know that that functionality is available and then we can help you with it. But first of all, on the dashboard, because that's what we're covering today, the number of days ahead are important. So I'm going to look two weeks ahead now for cows to carve because I don't want a cow carving down early. Okay, then what I've got are my warning triggers. So at the moment, they're set to 30, 30, 30. And you'll notice on the dashboard that we didn't have any warning. So it's important that you set that correctly. So I would say that if, if the cow's gone over seven days, then obviously we need a warning. We need a red line to come up to say this cow should have been dried off. Um, cow's due to calf. Well, that's, that's daft. We need to know if she goes more than five days overdue, then we could have a problem. So make sure these settings are correct because they're important. Do you want the young stock to appear on the dashboard? We well, generally would say yes to that, but if you don't, just take that tick out. And then what you must do is you must hit this button here, save preset. The moment you save that, that will then change the report. And now you can see we're getting warnings for cows that are overdue. So if I go back to the dashboard now, you'll see it's recalculating. And then it will start coming up and showing us, there we go. So out of the 30 cows due to calve, six cows are overdue. So if I click on it, then I can see straight away, these are my problem cows. So this cow, I've got a major problem because he's 15 days overdue. So it's super important that we get your, your settings correct on the dashboard because then everybody can see where there's a problem. We're on top of PDs, that's good. But out of six cows due to dry off, three are overdue. Okay. Um, you'll notice there's another little setting in here, another little cog. So where is a cog? It's a setting. So we're just going to go into there. And I'll just show you that the standard dry off list. So this is what I think most of you will have. Um, so cow number 600, we see the expected calving date. Out of nine milk recordings on two occasions, she was above the threshold of 250. Remember that we can change that. And based on that, we can then recommend a, a form of dry cow therapy. I just want to show you another list, which uh, we're setting up more and more for people. 
So I go to the cog, I select this one here, cows to dry off. And I think for la larger herds, this is a better, better report. So what it's showing me here is the cow number, obviously. So let's pick 3116, um, first carver. Uh, last three somatic cell counts had a 19, a 24, and a 24. So why does it say dry off extra? Because she had one case of mastitis. So you can see that the red line on the bottom left, that tells us she was a problem cow. The colors are important, uh, 3091. She was really high, 634. Always put the cursor over the top and that will help you explain it. So I know this cow was low before and she went high. And then you can see here, she remained chronic. So 229 and 520. So based on that, that's the form of dry cow therapy that we'd recommend. So the reason I show you this report is because in general settings, which we covered first of all, that's where you have the option to say, if she had one case of mastitis, then this is the form of dry cow therapy that we'd use. So if you want to use this report, please call the help desk and we'll, we'll set that one up for you. Okay, let's just go back to the dashboard. Uh, one other, just fairly quickly, another cog sitting here, action calendar. Okay. We covered this at the workshops actually, and we set quite a few up for people and they, they seem to really like it. So what we now have, it's just a different way of looking at it. We have all the cows that are due to PD, so I can see the six cows, the little blue, just that's, that's the cows behind the calculation. These are the cows that are due to be PD'd. And what it's doing is it's presenting that information per day. So my standard cow calendar events from your dashboard, and then we've got cows due to be foot, foot trimmed. I just want to show you this quickly, properties. Okay. You can do it by day, by week, or by months. So if I select weeks, Remember, always save the preset, otherwise it'll only work that one time. Say OK. It's now going to recalculate, and it now presents that information as week 17, week 18, week 19, so I can see exactly what's due to happen. So week 19 is looking pretty busy there. We've got 41 cows due to PD, only one to dry off, 13 to calve, and 12 cows to foot trim. So that's actually on your dashboard, um, and that's a report that I know some people aren't aware that it, it exists. Okay, so little cogs, look out for the little cogs. Those are settings that you can change. Right, finally, just going down to the bottom. Um, if I look at that, I wouldn't be particularly impressed. Um, two or three things to say on it. If we look at the somatic cell count recording, that's what's going on. But if you look at the values that have been given there, so they're saying that basically 10 is a good one and 50 is bad. So it's completely meaningless. Now, these, these thresholds are important. What is a poor figure? What's a good figure? Because that determines whether it's red, which is not good. Orange means there's no, no big difference, basically. It's not fluctuating too badly. It's within tolerance. And green, that's where we want to go. Green is good. So it's important that we select the right graphs on here so everybody can see what's going on, and we se select the right values. So on this one, I wouldn't be that impressed with it. Um, I would want to see conception rate, insemination rate, and preg rate. So I'm just going to take you through here. On the right hand side, above the one that says expected carving interval, again, there's a cog. So this is where we can change figures. So the first one is we're looking at SPP. Um, we will be doing a webinar <laughs> on SPP. Uh, but if you have milk meters, why would you do it on milk recording? Let's do it on the milk meter yield, and then we get a seven day average. So all I did to change that was I just selected, clicked on it, and it then gives me the option. So obviously, if you haven't got milk meters and you've selected milk meters, then the graph is going to be blank and it's no use. So make sure that you select the, the most logical thing for your farm. So those are my values, good and bad. Here we have the cell counts. So I'm going to say good is 100 and bad on this farm is we're going to say 250. So we must select the right things. We then scan down. I think what happens, a lot of people look at it and they, they just think feed deviation per group, that's it. There's, there's nothing else there. But if you do scroll down, you'll see there's a lot more. So I would always do this. I'd always have preg rate, conception rate, and insemination rates. I have my values in there. I'm just checking that. So overall preg rates, I'm saying 13 is bad, 20 is, is good. And my conception rates, we'll just maybe move that up a little bit. OK, so I've added three new buttons. So what I want to do is I don't want the whole thing to be too cluttered. 
So I need to take a take a couple of things out. Expect a Kavi interval. I don't need that as a button and as a graph. There's no, there's no point. So I'm going to take that button out. I'm going to take out average days in milk. Okay. Say okay to that. And we're now getting somewhere. So I've got a good figure now that I can see what's going on with the milk meter yield. I probably don't need that one because I've got that as a graph. So I'm going to remove that actually. I can see the insemination rate. I'm kind of on targets, but not doing not as good as I want to be because I said 60 was good. My preg rate I'm happy with, and my conception rate I'm really happy with. So it's green. So everybody there can see see what's going on. I just want to pull one one out actually. So we'll just move the uh, button out on SPP, and I'll just take it down to here, and I'll put in what's called silo indicator. This isn't going to work for everybody because we have to receive feed intake. So if you have an automated parlor or an automated out of parlor feed st station or a robot, and we're receiving feed intake from that system, then we're able to put the silo indicator in. And I'll just just take you there just to explain how that's that's set up. So cow's head. We go over to feeding. We then pick silo indicator. And you'll see here, you can create a new one. If I just, um, well, I won't delete it, but if you create new, then that's exactly what you do and you'll see the same screen. So you pick the feed type, that will be set up automatically. And then what you can do is you can say, okay, what's the capacity of the bin? And I'm gonna say that at the moment, we have seven and a half tons sitting in there. My minimum content, when I want a warning, this is when it will go red. So it stays green until it hits the minimum content, then it will go red. It's now time to select a feed method. So it will, it will guide you through it. Okay, that's now no red warning there, so that's all good. So we close it, go back to the dashboard. And I think, I think it's just a nice way to have it sitting there. It helps explain what's going on. So now I can look at somatic cell counts. I can look at milk meter yields based on the seven day average. I can see what's going on. I have my feed bin sitting there and I have preg rate, conception rate and insemination rate. And obviously you can add to the other ones that you want. Maybe it's the heifer side that you want to really drill down on. Last but not least, if you have the system linked to the milking parlor, um, you'll have the ability down here to have things like low milk production, uh, ketosis warnings, activity warnings, uh, rumination alerts, all of those we need to configure for you. So if you have 220 cows on the report with low milk production, then the settings obviously are not correct. Please give us a call um, and that's what we enjoy doing. Uh, we can log into your system and make sure that information is correct. Because every day that it reads in the milk meter yields or it pulls in activity or conductivity, whatever it happens to be, we want that to be right in front of you so that you can see the cows where there's a problem. So if you're not happy with the settings on there, please phone us and we'll try and help. Okay, um, that's an overview of general settings. That's how we want the dashboard to be set up. Hopefully you find that helpful. There will be a survey at the end. Um, I don't want to